The first time a rocket was launched to put something in space was in 1957 when the first satellite Sputnik was launched. It was a big blow to the USA during the initial stage of the Cold War, but a big step for mankind. This event started the space race that ended with the USA winning the race by putting first men on the surface of the moon. Although the history of rockets dates back to the 10th century, the process of launching a rocket in war is quite different from launching a rocket in space that carries with it some payload to be inserted in a particular orbit. The launch happens in different stages and precise calculations are required for each stage to run perfectly. So let's do a breakdown of a rocket launch event and understand its various stages. My name is Siddharth and you are watching The World of Science. Before moving ahead, tell me, what if you could build and launch your own rockets? Thanks to Rocketeers, now you can do that. Rocketeers make high-quality, affordable and solid-fuel-powered model rocket kits that even you can launch at your place up to the height of 500 feet. Wait, what? This is surely some desire fulfillment for all those who wanted to become rocket scientists but could not or those who aspire to be one someday. They have also partnered with ISRO and created awesome merchandises to raise awareness about the works of ISRO as a pillar for space research in India. You can order these rocket kits and ISRO merchandise from their website rocketeers.in. Use our coupon code RWOS for an exclusive 15% off on all products. Link is in the description below. In 1903, Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky derived what is famously known as Tsiolkovsky Rocket Equation or Ideal Rocket Equation, which is a mathematical equation that describes the motion of a vehicle during a rocket-like flight. So the first requirement is the thrust force produced due to the ejection of burned fuel at high speed that pushes the rocket in the opposite direction. Total thrust acting on the rocket is equal to the product of rate of flow of fuel mass and effective exhaust velocity. Force applied on an object over time produces an impulse. Specific impulse, ISP, represents the efficiency of the rocket by the ratio of momentum changed to the fuel spent. So the higher the specific impulse, the more efficient the rocket will be. A rocket is built in various stages with each mounting over the other. The lower part of the rocket body is known as the first stage that contains the oxidizer tank, fuel tank and interstage wiring tunnel. The first stage of the liquid fuel rocket can also be attached with several solid fuel boosters. The second stage above it contains a restartable liquid fuel engine. It is accompanied by an upper stage booster that usually contains solid fuel. At the time of the flight, the first stage main engine ignites along with other available boosters. The remaining stages ignite in later stages as the rocket ascends to a certain height. At the top of this arrangement, either satellite or payload is placed. Each stage has its rocket motor. The liftoff will start at the countdown and the rocket starts ascending on a parabolic path under the reaction of its thrust force. After ascending to a certain height, boosters are discarded and they fall into the ocean. At this point, rockets are usually at an altitude of 18 kilometers. The first stage engine continues to burn for nearly 4 to 5 minutes and approximately 5 minutes later, the first stage shuts off and detaches itself from the rocket body. The vehicle must have reached a height of 120 to 150 kilometers. Then the second stage engines ignite themselves and continue to burn for another 10 minutes and the vehicle at this point must have reached low Earth orbit. After some time, the second stage shuts down but restarts after a few seconds. Before the second stage separation, it is required to spin the rocket body so the spin motors are fired. After that, the second stage is detached and the third stage is fired. The third stage will continue to burn its solid fuel and when the fuel is completely burnt, the third stage separation starts. Satellite is unfolded and an onboard operation will orient the satellite around the orbit of the Earth. Once the satellite is established around the orbit, it will continue to rotate under the gravitational force of Earth and small boosters will maintain the position of the satellite in case of orbital decay. To separate the satellite from the third stage, pyrotechnic actuators and push-off springs are used. The outer body of the rocket will fall towards the Earth and burn up while a small portion remains in orbit and gets accumulated as space debris. Each stage separation and ignition sequence is well programmed and even a slight error can change the course of the rocket. This simple looking process is much more complicated and involves all fields of engineering and technology for a successful launch. 
Surely rocket technology is the pinnacle of modern science. In future videos, we shall explain the complicated yet interesting mechanisms of rocket science in an easier way. Now let me tell you about something else which is also really, really interesting. The Chinese used to fire rockets on the battlefield around the 10th century. They were small gunpowder propelled fire arrows. Earlier rockets were also popular in Korea, India and Europe. Now, who could have thought one day people can travel to space by sitting inside those flying projectiles? According to an account written by Evelia Celebi, there was a legendary Ottoman aviator, Lagari Hassan Celebi, who made a successful manned rocket flight in Istanbul in the 17th century. It was a seven-winged rocket that used 65 kg of gunpowder. He said to the Sultan that he was going to talk to Jesus and later landed in the sea, swam back to the shore and joked that Jesus sent his regards to the Sultan. He was ranked as a soldier in the Ottoman army. This story is crazy and it only shows the nature of human endeavor. But someone thought of flying in the rocket some 300 years ago is a history worth remembering. Rockets were heavily used in Napoleonic Wars. During the pre-World War era, some thinkers started to find out the appropriate amount of fuels needed to stabilize the rocket and to achieve more speed. Rocket technology started reaching new heights from the post-World War era. So what are your thoughts about the evolution of rocket technology? Let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to check out Rocketeers.in to get your own model rockets to launch. These rockets can be reused a dozen times. So learn, build and fly. Do follow us on Instagram for daily quality content that'll make you fall in love with science. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific.